What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, you will learn about password best practices such as password length, password complexity, password history, password expiration, password reuse across sites, password managers, and password reset processes. All right, so password length. The longer the password, the harder it can be to crack. So when the number of characters for a password is limited, you should use a password that is as long as possible. Use six characters for your PIN or passcode when permitted. Use 16 characters instead of seven or eight for a web or account password. Look at the minimum password length. For maximum security, that's how long your password should be. Password complexity is designed to defeat typical methods of breaking passwords. So you got dictionary attacks, brute force attacks, and spidering. All three of them can work because typical passwords are simple and obvious, and here are how some of these attacks work. So with a dictionary attack, a dictionary attack uses a common list of words and tries them in various combinations. Brute force attack uses all possible combinations of alphanumeric characters, Spidering is a variation on the dictionary attack that uses terms and phrases, phrases that can be found on the target's website. Password complexity refers to the type of characters that can be used in the password. Many organizations require that passwords be alphanumeric or have at least one special character, such as one of the following. You got the bang sign at the hashtag or the pound sign, dollar percent, the carrot ampersign, uh, what is that, the star, the parentheses, etc. right? A strong password should be at least eight characters long. It should contain a combination of upper and lowercase letters, contain at least one special character, and, can, and contain at least one numeric value, meaning zero through nine. A password should not contain a word, String of words are phrase found in a standard dictionary, and it should not include personal information such as a family name, pet, birthday, location, etc. If you want to use uh, words as the basis for a password, try mixing them with numbers of special characters or using special characters as substitutions, as in the following examples. So you see the word password that would be considered a weak password because it is something that can be easily found in a dictionary and probably somebody can just type in there and guess. If you want it to be slightly stronger, you would change the A to an at sign, the two S's to the dollar sign, the, Z, uh, the O to a zero, and you would capitalize the D. And to make this thing even stronger, you would stick the uh, asterisk sign in between the dollar sign and the capital W. Password history prevents the reuse of old passwords until a specified number of new passwords have been used first. This feature works along with password expiration. Password expiration policies are designed to require users to change passwords on a specified schedule, requiring users to change passwords. Websites and networks reduce the likelihood of a security breach caused by repeated attempts to break the password. When a password expiration policy exists, users are typically warned a few days ahead of time that a change is coming to help avoid disruption. Password complexity history and expiration can be found in the window in the Microsoft Windows uh, through the local group policy editor, also known as the gpedit.msc. Um, to start the GP edit, you would press Windows and R simultaneously to turn on the run dialog. Enter gpedit.msc in the empty box and click OK. Next in the command prompt, type gpedit.msc and click Enter. To see current settings or to make changes, open computer configuration, Windows settings, security settings, account policies, password policy to enable account lockout. Stipulate how long to wait before re-enabling login attempts and specify the number of unsuccessful account logins allowed before locking the account, uh, which is also known as an account lockout threshold. 
and then click uh, open lockout policy. So here are some screenshots of everything that I just stated and what it would look like to help you navigate to account policies that specifically deal with password policies where you can go in and make these changes. Through the local security policy and group policy and windows, you can set up pos uh, password policies that require users to do the following. So you can change passwords periodically by clicking local policies and then going to security options. You can be informed in advance that passwords are about to expire. You can set that up through account policies and then going to the password policy section. You can enforce a minimum password length require complex passwords and prevent old passwords from being reused normally. And all of those can be found as well in the accounts policies, password policy section. And then you can also wait a certain number of minutes after a specified or unsuccessful login has taken place before somebody can try to log in again. And that could be found also in accounts policies under the account lockout policy. Uh, to make these settings in local security settings, you would open the security settings node and navigate to the appropriate sub nodes, which will be shown in parentheses below. In group policy or gpedit.msc, you would navigate to computer configuration, window settings, security settings, account policies, and password policy. The uh, next one, it will be the same steps, except the last one, you will navigate to account lockout policy. And then the final one, it will be conf computer uh, configuration, Windows settings, security settings, local policies, then security options, and you will make whatever changes you feel are appropriate. Um, to help computers from unauthorized use, users can be required to enter their passwords to return to the desktop after the screensaver starts. So users should also be required to lock their workstations, which also requires a login to return to the desktop. In Windows, the screensaver um, required password settings or the on resume display log on screen chat box that is located in the screen saver settings window, which can be accessed from the control panel. And then you would navigate over to the personalization section to lock a computer. You would press the windows and the L the windows button and the L key at the same time. And Mac, you would use the desktop and screen saver menu to choose a screen saver and use security and privacy to require a password to unlock your system. Linux distributions that use the X11 window system, well, they use the X screen saver. Password reuse across sites. So many users set up the same or similar passwords on the various sites and systems they log into. The reason why most users do this is because complex passwords are hard to remember. And one password is easier to remember than half a dozen or more. A better solution to the problem of multiple logins would be a password manager. Single sign on. So single sign on, also known as SSO, is a property of access control of multiple related yet independent software systems. With this property, a user logs in with a single ID and password to gain access to any of several related systems. So, for example, a single Microsoft account login provides access to Outlook email, OneDrive storage, Windows 8 and later, and the Microsoft App Store. Password managers. A password manager, manager is a software application or hardware device used to store and manage a person's passwords and strong passwords. Typically, all stored passwords are encrypted, requiring the user to create a master password to access all of the stored managed passwords. After you set up accounts with your password manager, you log into the password manager and it takes care of logging you into secure sites. And some of the leading password managers are LastPass, LogMeOnce, Dashlane, and KeePassX. Uh, how to reset password. So when it's time to reset your password, there are a variety of reasons for doing this. If the website uses the self-service password reset or the SSPR method, Here's what you should expect. First, you would start the process. You would go to the vendor's website and click the lost password or the reset password option. 
Second, you would enter the email associated with your account. This will typically generate an email that you must click to continue. Third, click the link in the password reset email. Because you asked for the email, you can trust the link that you received. Fourth, when asked to reset the password, enter the password twice as prompted. Use the guidelines given earlier to create a strong password. If you prefer to generate one, open a separate tab in your browser and navigate to a password generator site. Copy and paste the password generated into the password and password confirmation fields. And fifth, save a copy of your passwords and your username. If you have set up a password generator, this is a good time to use it. Otherwise, create a document, encrypt the document, and store it in a safe location. How to reset your password in Windows. So depending upon the version of Windows that you use, you can use settings or PC settings accounts or the control panel user accounts dialog to change a local account. Resetting a password in Mac, you can reset your Mac password in system preferences and then navigate to users and groups. How to reset it in Linux, you would open a Linux terminal and enter the command P-A-S-S-W-D. You will be prompted to provide current and new passwords to change a password for another user. Log in as the root or the super user with the uh, command SU, then use the command P-A-S-S-W-D and whatever the user's name is, follow the prompts to change the password, to change the root password at startup. Procedures may vary according to the Linux distribution. How to change your passcode in iOS. So the passcode is the four digit or six digit code you enter to gain access to your iOS device if you decide to encrypt it. To change an existing passcode, open settings and open touch ID and passcode or just simply passcode or face ID and passcode, depending upon what option is present on your device. Tap change passcode to enter a new six digit passcode for other options such as the less secure four digit passcode or more secure custom numeric or alphanumeric codes. Tap passcode options. How to change your pin in Android. So the pin is the four digit or more code you enter to gain access to your Android device if you decide to encrypt it. To change an existing pin, tap settings, navigate to lock screen and security or similar wording, which varies by device. Then, then you would navigate to the screen lock type and you will go to hit the pin into your current pin and then tap pin again. On the pin change dialog, tap the new pin. When you, then you have to restart your phone. And when you restart your phone, uh, enter your new pin. How to set up a password on the BIOS or the UEFI. So a BIOS UEFI password prevents unauthorized users from changing BIOS UEFI firmware settings. Use this option if you are concerned about hardware configurations or firmware based security issues. For example, if the usual configuration prevents the use of USB drives as a boot device, putting in a BIOS slash UEFI firmware password prevents anyone from changing the settings to permit booting from a USB drive. To set a password, start the system and press the keys needed to access the BIOS or the UEFI firmware setting. Not every system supports this option and there is no uniformity about this option's location. However, once you find it, enable it and be sure to write down the password that you assign. The password can be removed by clearing the CMOS chip's memory for greater protection, enable chassis intrusion detection so you can be warned if someone tries to open the system to clear the CMOS with a jumper block or by removing the battery. Note that some laptops have a hard disk lock password that can prevent the hard disk from being used in a different computer. And finally, password policy. A password policy provides a set of rules on how to create strong passwords and use them properly. It might specify which devices should be password protected. Regardless, having a strong password policy is a must for any organizations. So that is our class. So let's go ahead and get into some of this check on learning. 
So the first question is, implementing which of the following policies would help to stop a dictionary attack on your device? Would it be minimum password length? Would it be account lockout threshold? Would it be alphabetic, alphabetical password requirement? Or would it be a pen? So which, which of these would stop a dictionary attack? The correct answer would be an account lockout threshold. So basically what that's saying is if somebody enters the wrong password X amount of times, it's going to prevent somebody from trying to enter a new password for a specified amount of time. That specified amount of time could be five minutes, 30 minutes, 24 hours, or a whole week. So whatever you decide to set it as. All right, next question. You have received the message from a service you subscribe to that a password change has been requested, but you did not request a password change. What should you do? Should you ignore the, ignore the message? Should you click the link? Should you call the service or should you read the message? So a message comes in saying you requested a password change, but you didn't initiate the password change. What should you do? You should read the message because what's normally going to happen is you're going to read the message and it might say something like, um, here's an email for a link saying that you requested a password change. If you did not request this change, you can go ahead and just discard this message or whatever the case may be. But just read the message to see what it says. And if you know you didn't do it, then most instances you can just ignore it. Because whoever's trying to get access to your account, well, they're going to need access to your actual email to initiate that password change. Final question. Which of the following is the strongest password is it option a is it b is it c or is it d so which of these is the strongest password ladies and gentlemen the correct answer would be option b is the strongest and why is option b the strongest well first and foremost it has the most characters um, I don't know exactly how many characters in it, but it's longer than all the other passwords or it looks like it is. And then it uses upper and lower case. It uses numbers and it uses special characters. That's why this is the strongest. The first one, my password, it's not going to cut it. Anybody can guess that option D my password one, two, three is slightly stronger, but the word password is in there, which can, Leave it, leave it open to a potential brute force attack. And option C is pretty strong, but it's not long enough. All right. So in summary, we have talked about password best practices where we discuss password length, password complexity, history, reuse across sites, password managers and password reset processes. So for more information about this, please visit my website, technologyg.com, so you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass your CompTIA IT fundamentals certification exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.